Hey everybody and welcome to my channel. So today I'm going to show you a flip through of my passion planner journal. I do use this as a teacher bullet journal for work. So I thought I would show you how I've been using it for the past about three, three and a half months. So this is a small passion planner size, which is the A5 size and it does come with two ribbons, signature green ribbons, <clears throat> excuse me. It also has a band to keep it closed and then in the back there's also a pocket and I just have uh, stickers in there. So most of what you're going to see is like I said my teacher bullet journal. I did have to add a lot of black sticky notes to cover up confidential information so you are going to see that but I think that you can you'll still be able to see how I have been using it and hopefully this will give you guys some ideas if you wanted to try bullet journaling for work or for your just your personal planner. So, <clears throat> excuse me, this is the key that I use. I did try the official bullet journal method by Ryder Carroll back in 2017 and honestly, the majority of it just did not work for me. So I've kind of adapted and just made things work. So this is the key that I have. I have a dot for a note, check for completed, and X for canceled, a partial arrow for migrated, either like to the next week or the next month, a star for a reminder, and then also this triangle to let me know that that task has been started. So this sticker also came from Etsy. <clears throat> Then I have a 2021 and 2022 planner, uh, not planner, calendars, and these were free printables from SaturdayGift.com, and she does have a bunch of different styles of these. She also has monthly calendar printables on her website, and I will leave that linked down below. Next, I have an index because one thing that I do like about the Passion Planner journals is that the page the pages are always numbered in the bottom and that makes it really easy. I did go ahead and count out the grid spacing. With this journal, you can choose blank grid, lined, and I believe dot grid. I just chose the regular grid. And I did this in the beginning when I wanted to count out the spaces to make sure everything was even, but the more that I used this, the more that I kind of just eyeballed it from the week before, but I did want to have that in here if I wanted to come back and reference it. So this is the first section and these are work passwords that I need. And then I have, these were some notes that I took from Jennifer's YouTube video and I just printed it out on sticker paper and put that right in here. <clears throat> I also have the four quarters, so our four report cards and the due date. This was actually a weekly stencil um, that I picked up from Amazon, and I will link that for you guys also if you're interested. I believe it comes with six different weekly layouts, but I thought it was perfect to use for tracking uh, report card dates. Then I have my IEP due dates, and then I jumped right into it's basically like the Hobonichi style layout. So I'm going to put all of my months in the beginning and then the end of the months, I will start the weeklies. And I have just been doing these month by month. So you'll see that the entire school year has not been completed. So here is September and I did not freehand this. This was also a stencil. It was a monthly set that I picked up because I'm terrible at drawing out monthly calendars. That was one of the things that I hated about the bullet journal method is that, you know, everybody else had these beautifully decorated and drawn out months and I just can't do it. So I just use a stencil and I love the way it came out. So the kind of system that I have going here is I use a little pencil sticker for events and then I use a star for any type of meeting. So that could be like an in-person meeting or a Zoom meeting. So on the 5th, we had picture day, and then on the 6th, there's a star that tells me there's a meeting, so I had an 8.30 Zoom meeting. And these stickers, the, um, the school stickers are available in my Etsy shop. The washi tape, I believe that set came from Hobby Lobby. 
Yes, I think it came from Hobby Lobby. It was a seasonal set. So here we have November and December. And that is as far as I've gotten with the monthlies. And then sometime this month or next month, I will go ahead and put January and February in here. So I left enough pages for me to do through June. And then I started with the weekly. So I started this on Monday, August the 30th. And one thing that you are going to notice is that I did not add the weekends in my work planner. For me, it just doesn't make any sense. I don't have really any appointments or tasks that I absolutely have to get done for school on the weekends. So I didn't even put them in there. Um, you know, I have another planner that I use as an everyday carry for my personal and home and business thing. So I just didn't put it in. Um, but I do have to make sure that I really pay attention to the calendar because I want to make sure that my dates are correct. So he, here you can see again with my stars. So that tells me that I had meetings every day this week. And then I just put the time. So I've kind of got four, three to four sections that I have repeated for every week. I have usually a note section, prep, to do, and email. I kind of vary, but it's pretty much identical from week to week. So this was the first week that I used was in August. And then we jumped right into September. Now, when I first got this, I did go ahead and prep my lines for I think the whole month of September. So here I was trying out just four grid spaces. And then I believe the following week, yes, I tried, let's see, one, two, three, four, five, six which worked out well, but it kind of didn't leave me any space for my notes. So I just keep things really simple in here, straight into the point, a little bit of decoration, and really just a lot of work things. Most of the, what looks like markers in here are just paper mate flares. The actual pen is usually a Sarasa 0.4 or 0.5. This week I did switch it up a little bit from my horizontal columns and I kind of just flip flopped, which worked out fine. It still definitely leaves me plenty of space. This was the week I decided to try like the traditional passion planner layout that I have used previously, which is vertical columns. So I just used a marker and a pen and drew in basically five columns. Um, <clears throat> the only thing with this is that it didn't quite work out as well. Um, I think you can probably see that on this for this week there's just so much more white space and I think it's because you know as as we change and as things in our lives change we kind of have to adapt and the vertical this vertical layout is just not working for me um, I really need the horizontal spaces to fully write out things that I need to get done so I tried it I'm glad I tried it but I definitely as you'll see just went right back to what was working and that was my vertical spreads I did start to track a little bit like what I had for lunch, the days that I bought lunch. Our um, school cafeteria manager has incredible teacher lunches that she makes. We do pay for them, but they are just really good. So I usually will get teacher lunch on Monday and Wednesday. Mondays, because you know, beginning of the week is always hectic. It's one less thing I have to think about. So um, this week I just got it on Wednesday, so I'll always put cafe lunch if I have purchased. Um, and here you can see some of my keys, so checklist, um, there's my triangle that something was started, and then here is a triangle that it was started that week, and then it was also finished that week, so I just put a checkbox inside the triangle. There's a half arrow letting me know that that needed to get migrated to the next week. So that was October, and then this was the first week of November.
and another week in November. I tried something different just with the vertical lines and over here email to do prep and notes. I just used one letter like I did over here for the days of the week instead of writing everything out. I really like the way that this turned out. Um, I started putting my weather icons in here just so I can plan when to take the kids out to the patio or the playground or the grassy, grassy area that we have at school. So this was last week. And then this is the upcoming week and I tried something different again this week. I just used a Tombow and um, just a Tombow like brush marker and a pen and kind of just drew out boxes. So this is the upcoming week when I am filming this. And then I went ahead and did the week of Thanksgiving because we are only at school for two days that week. And then the last week of November for me is technically going to be December because December does start that week. So that week has been left blank. So that's the end right now. I'm on page 51 and there are a total of 210 pages. So I definitely have enough space to get through all of this school year and I definitely have also space just to take notes or journal or really anything else that I need for work. So that is a flip through of my passion planner journal that I'm using as my teacher bullet journal. If you guys have any questions for me, let me know in the comments down below. Also, let us know how you use your work planner. Do you use a traditional planner, a bullet journal, or are you just using a digital planner? I know at for my job, some people really stick to like the Outlook calendars um but let us know how you guys are doing things thank you so much for coming back and watching another video if you enjoy planner or faith related content please subscribe and i will talk to you in my next one